Okay, so I mean, like, next questions are a little bit more broad. It's not just about data types. Um, so yeah, I was talking to you the other day, and, and you mentioned this this nice property of computer science as respect to with respect to other sciences is that, that it has some kind of nice. Are we going out from there? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> They're getting a very good picture of you, which is just as well, because I'm sure it's more beautiful than I am. <laughs> okay, so, I mean, you were mentioning this idea of nice balance in computer science, right? I mean, like, the, the, the theory and the practice are not really disconnected as in other sciences. I mean, could you explain a little bit more on that? I mean, I, well, th this is what I like about computer science, and actually about databases in particular, because I always like to look at theory and, uh, and practice. I don't know where I would classify myself. And by and large, the theory and the database uh, and, and the practice parts of database uh, collaborate fairly well. I mean, there are a few rifts which we know about, which sometimes coincide with the San Andreas Fault. But, um, <laughs> but for the most part, I think database is a very nice subject in which, uh, you know, theory can quite rapidly lead into some interesting practical developments, and practical developments can lead back to theoretical problems. As you know, I've been working on uh, provenance, which is um, something that came out by looking at what people were actually doing, you know, and what they wanted out of their data. Uh, I mean, there are lots and lots of questions like that, which require people to stand back and build models, you know, maybe very simple models, uh, to, you know, to see whether things can work out, which require some kind of theoretical or principled investigation, then go back and try and see if you can get something to work. And I think that's what's nice about it. Um, I, I have to say that I'm a little worried that computer science will be able to keep this up indefinitely, and whether we'll see sort of it sliding into computer engineering, which will be, you know, sort of like mechanical engineering, and then a few rarefied uh, theoreticians, which will be like, I don't know, theoretical physics. Um, I, 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 th this may happen, but uh, not in my lifetime, I hope. I, I, I hope it will stay together with one subject. I, I know that that's the part of the type of job. Yeah. So, um, so, yeah, in that respect, you, I mean, like, the next question is, I mean, do you think that CS theory is still important for Applications, right? I mean, like going to the particular case of provenance. I mean, like, do you feel that your theoretical work on provenance has had some impact, or uh, that it has been helpful to understand better what provenance is? For I, 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 th I think so. Look, I, 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 you know, we haven't got a provenance startup company yet or anything like that. Uh, but the process of trying to understand something is always very interesting, and ultimately percolates down into, in, into the real world. And I think this is true of a lot of theory. You, um, you know, a lot of it, people will look at and say, where did that lead? But, you know, and a lot of it didn't lead anywhere, but it completes a picture, and, and it sort of, and it guides and, uh, future research. And you can look at a lot of, um, things that have happened actually not only in databases but in programming languages. And they go back to some sort of theory. You often forget that they go back. Uh, I, I can remember, but just to give you one example which shows my age, I, I, I came into databases after the invention of the relational model. But the people who were working in the databases at the time had read these papers on relational on relational databases and said, oh, it's a very elegant piece of theory, but it will never work. <laughs> <laughs> and yeah. so and, and it probably didn't work for the reasons that they thought it should work, but it worked. And the theory was very useful afterwards. And I think that tends to be true of a lot of things. Uh, the development of new query languages, I mean, uh, even things like XQuery, which is something, again, I think is a little um, overweight. Too much. But it was nevertheless informed by a lot of stuff that went before it. So you know, that, 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 that stuff is very so useful. So in that respect, you think that database theory in particular and CS theory in general will continue being useful? In yes, and, and again, to be slightly insulting to you, uh, theory is cheap, actually. <laughs> Massive software development projects, which um, only occasionally succeed, are very expensive. But, 
Uh, Syria's is relatively cheap. Theoreticians uh, you know, don't, don't, don't need huge budgets. And, uh, and uh, it's, it's self-regulating. So I, I, I think uh, we, we should uh, support it. Uh, yes, you can obviously get problems that assume, that, that maybe have very little practical value, but assume some kind of mathematical, consume some kind of mathematical interest. And th those happen, it's a necessary side effect. And we have to sit back and assess them, but I, I don't see that we, that that's not an argument against it. Okay, so the last question is, I mean like, what do you think that are like the, let's say, four or five most remarkable achievements of computer science? And like what, or the ones that you find most beautiful and any way that you want to direct them? Oh, that's very hard. Um, so, the things that are closest to my heart both are the development of ideas in programming languages. Um, ideas about types and, uh, and ideas about concurrency. There's very beautiful ideas there that have become practically important. Not quite in the way that they are in, intended. And the same in databases. Uh, these, um, th these beautiful ideas about the structure of data and its connection with logic, which got developed and were profoundly important on, on the way, on, on the real world. I mean, just, just think of it, the, the impact of these things. You, you, know, you, you go and, you know, you go home and you want to write a Python script to talk to some relational database, and it, you know, maybe it looks a little complicated, but actually it's so easy compared with the same thing that would have happened had you tried to do that 20 years ago. And, and, and that is, you know, th these both seem very practical things now. But the roots of both of those have gone back into the, into the research. Uh, then in other areas, I think, I find cryptography fascinating. I mean, that's a, a, a real achievement in computer science. And a, a great application of complexity. Uh, I, I don't... Areas about which I know very little, but I think we may prove absolutely fascinating are things like quantum computing. Uh, and I think, as I would mention, my final, uh, the final challenge is that uh, Moore's law for single processes is not going to go on forever. We know we're hitting the limit. And we also know that our brains, which have a cycle time of about a tenth of a second, compared with your uh, laptop there, which has a cycle time of uh, 10 to the 8 or 10 to the 9 times that, our brains can actually function for many tasks much faster than your laptop. There are going to be some very, very interesting developments in highly parallel computing. I don't know what they are, but that sooner or later is where we're going to have to turn, where computer science is going to have to turn, and I think the theory of that is also going to be fascinating. Great.